Welcome, I'm Meg Ryan. Winston Churchill once said, we make a living by what we get, we make a life by what we give. And many organizations have taken this notion to heart, making philanthropy part of their mission. Here's one such story. Stories have the power to teach kids anything. As a kid, I was always reading. I always had my nose in a book. You know, I read all the Nancy Drew books. It's really endless, the sort of tools that stories give us to educate kids. My favorite story was James and the Giant Peach, and it was because my second grade teacher, Mrs. Casper, read it to me. You know, having been a former teacher and now administrator, I can only tell you that that is such a powerful thing when you read a story to a child. Storytelling is the language of humanity. Everything that we hope, everything that we dream, everything that we create is contained in the stories that we tell ourselves and one another because it's our imaginations really that are the superpower of human beings. Stories help literacy in so many ways. I mean, there's so many studies that have proven that when kids hear stories, when they're read to, that they just develop quicker. I think it's incredibly powerful. Having they had the opportunity to impact reading habits uh, of children is kind of why I feel like I'm here. So you cannot have a just society unless you have an informed and literate population. We're coming out of a pandemic, so all of our learning was done online, with the screen, with the iPad, and so there was a really big disconnect between the teacher and the student, even with their peers. So to come into a world now where we're back face to face, and today was the first day without a mask, you know, it's the connection is starting to come back, but it's a work in progress. We have to empower future generations to become lifelong learners with the aids of whatever technologies are at our disposal. Reading Rainbow was a mission to use the prevailing technology of the time, television, to capture the attention of kids and point them in the direction of literature and the written word. And, and using TV to do that was counterintuitive um, at the time. In fact, television in the educational community was really considered the evil enemy. Our digital touch points have increased, you know, uh, significantly and so now kids aren't just looking at TV, they're looking at personal devices and screens and there's a lot of really great educational content, uh, both at home and in the classroom. But it gives kids access to the world and that's a great thing. The downside to that is that when you give a child a screen, you're giving them what to interpret and when you remove that from the equation, it puts the creative responsibility upon the child. One thing that we're focused on is giving an alternative to that and to give them that same access to the world, the same access to stories, but in a kid-appropriate way by removing the screen from the experience. It is through the right use and utilization of the technology that will enable us to give our children the best chance they can at achieving their full potential. Thanks for joining us. We hope you'll join us next time as we continue to explore the latest developments impacting our lives. I'm Meg Ryan.